Good morning, friends. We are continuing our lecture on wing loading. We are trying to explore what sort of or what magnitude of wing loading we should have to perform various mission requirements. You very well understand that lift amount of lift will be proportional to the wing area. Amount of lift will also be proportional to the speed with which the wing is relatively flying with atmosphere, apart from densities and angle of attack, etcetera. When we try to ensure it has requisite velocity or speed, we think in terms of thrust to weight ratio. After all, thrust is a force which will give you the acceleration and hence the speed. When you try to see how much lift it can generate keeping other parameters constant for a given weight, we think in terms of what is the area. That is why we are discussing about ratio between weight and the wing area and that is wing loading. We have completed first exposure for wing loading primarily for cruise and loiter. Although we have spoken something about takeoff, but as I promised we will be talking about takeoff, what is the wing loading requirement for takeoff in little more detail because we need to also understand high lift devices which can increase CL max little more and the selection of such high lift devices will play an important role in designing overall aircraft performance. In that continuation, we were also talking about turn rates and we discuss loosely about instantaneous turn rate, right? Instantaneous turn rate and sustained turn rate. Whenever you are turning, how do you turn? You, I am moving like this. If I want to turn, I have to bank and I have to use that lift force to generate that centripetal acceleration to get a particular rate of turn. Whenever you are talking about turn rate, you please revise that V end diagram, load factor and speed diagram. It is something like this. And this point is the corner speed that corresponds to a speed where CL is CL max, N is N max, right? That is the speed required if you want to take advantage of large load factor as well as at a particular speed. If you do not maintain this speed, then you will not get this n max or you will not be able to generate the type of acceleration you want. Right? So, it is important keep back of this in your mind. Right? Now, what happens in instantaneous turn rate? In instantaneous turn rate, we are talking about I am going like this, I am turning, but I am not bothered about whether the speed is reducing or whether it is losing the altitude. So, it can do like this, right? Okay. But in sustained turn rate, we want the speed should remain constant, right? Why it is important? Come here. If I want to take advantage of corner speed, then I need to maintain the corner speed. Suppose I am turning and I am not touching the throttle and all, then the drag will increase as I am going to take instantaneous turn, so it will reduce the speed. 
The moment it is the speed, you are not able, you are somewhere here, so you are not able to take advantage of corner speed. And when you are for a fight, dog fight, or chasing an aircraft and going for a war scenario, suppose you are taking a turn and your speed is reducing and losing the altitude, then you are at a disadvantage position, right? Okay. So sustained turn rate becomes important when you are talking about a fight in the air, maybe a dog fight. If I recall, if for instantaneous turn rate, we have seen that W by S is Q C L max by N, and that we derived because lift equal to N W, and lift is half rho V square S C L max, whatever possible C L max, and from there I can find W by S as this. But a word of caution, this C L max is not that C L max when you are going for takeoff or landing, right? So just to give you an idea, for normal aircraft, it is, you are not be using any flaps when you are doing a turn because it demands a lot of increment in the drag, right? But yes, for fighter, for special fighters where flaps are also deployed, flaps are also deployed by few fighter airplane to get some C L max, more than the conventional C L max. And to have some idea, the C L max could be, you can take around 0.6 to 0.8 with single trailing edge flap for combat, of course for combat. And the C L max for calculation purpose for a complex airplane, it could be 1.0 to 1.5. But this sort of a maneuver demands huge T by W. So from here, we want to come to sustain turn rate. In sustain turn rate, please understand, if I, I have to turn at the same time, I have to ensure that I don't, don't lose altitude, nor there is a reduction in the speed. That means the thrust has to play an important role during the sustained turn rate. This is important for a combat scenario. Okay. And if I now try to see what does it mean, you know, you have to generate that much of lift so that you get a particular load factor, and this could be four. So 6G or 8G, depending upon what you are doing. So from here, I can write n equal to T by W into L by D. Okay, because T equal to D, lift equal to N W. So I can write T by N W equal to D by L, and which is I can directly see that n equal to T by W into L by D. Okay. Now, if you are trying to maneuver so that n equal to n max, because you are at corner speed somewhere here, this is corresponding to n max, and this is the corresponding speed. So, then n max equal to T by W max and L by D max. Okay? And once I write N max equal to T by W max into L by D max, and for L by D max, we know L by D max we are all familiar, this equivalently C L by C D max, and that fixes the C L value as under root C D naught by K. Okay? So, C L equal to under root C D naught by K, and K equal to 1 by pi aspect ratio E. So, your C L becomes under root of pi aspect ratio E into C D naught. 
please understand we are talking about combat but the relationship which I am writing here the drag pull are there for subsonic speeds right and those combats are generally performed at a speed lower than the sonic speed maybe around 280 meter per second worst case 300 meter per second so you have to really go for a wind tunnel testing and get those drag polar correctly okay so these are the mismatch and w by s equal to into cl by n so that will make use this under root pi aspect ratio e c d naught by n k infinity is the free stream dynamic pressure and you see that as you require larger n right your wing loading requirement goes down which is true because going down means what means you need larger area right that is why the larger lift will come but then your thrust limitation will come larger area means larger drag so it will be too demanding for t by w max right so you'll find that typically this value comes very low and you have to give a halt to that whether really it is possible or not or i have to non linearly increase the tw value by using some local supercharger afterburner like that okay or i don't mind spending money let it be inefficient but at least it, it does the performance so all those questions will be asked when you will be actually trying to synthesize these concepts right there is another way of looking into it and that is more realistic and it is being followed also so when i say sustained turn rate I am assuming thrust equal to drag because I do not want the speed to go down because then I will not be able to fly at a prescribed corner speed and if I do not fly at a prescribed corner speed I will not be able to take advantage of n max and C L max or n max the maximum load factor. Okay. So, if I do this then I write thrust equal to q infinity s c d naught plus n square w square by q infinity s pi aspect ratio e uh, you know where from it has come you are expert this part you can easily derive because you know lift equal to n w and this this part of drag is k c l square over k is equal to 1 by pi aspect ratio e. So, you just substitute you will get this expression thrust equal to q infinity s c d naught plus n square w square by q infinity s pi aspect ratio e. I divide left hand side and right hand side by w. So, I get t by w equal to q infinity c d naught by w by s plus w by s into n square pi q infinity aspect ratio e this expression i can further rearrange to write w by s equal to t by w plus minus under root t by w square minus 4 n square c d naught by pi aspect ratio e divided by 2 n square by q infinity pi aspect ratio e. For the youngsters you please yourselves should derive this expression from here. You could see it is in a quadratic in w by s right. Okay. So, you can find out w by s and these are two roots. What is important here you, you could see that whatever may be wing loading 
whatever may be wing loading. To make a real sense of this expression, you have to select T by W such that it is greater than equal to 2n C D naught by pi aspect ratio E under root. Right? B square minus 4 AC should be greater than or equal to 0. So, from here, this gives you a condition whatever may be irrespective of wing loading, you have to ensure that T by W is greater than or equal to 2 n under root C D naught by pi aspect ratio E. Just to have a feel for this number, you can always see if n is 2, then this value is 2 into 2, typical value of C D naught, let us say 0 0.02 divided by pi 3.14 aspect ratio E and let us say 0.6 I am taking value of E. So, that will give you a rough idea of what is the T by W minimum is required irrespective of wing loading right for a given value of load factor that is why is the connection. It says whatever wing loading you are doing dear friend you have to ensure that T by W satisfy this condition for different values of n. So, when you are designing you need to check this and at design stage you should take some realistic value of C D naught aspect ratio and E and that is where the synthesis come from statistical data right. And also if you are uh, flying at an angle of attack a little higher, little higher then whatever E value you have taken for other calculation reduce it by 30 percent that is also a good guideline right. When you will be doing an exercise you will be using these concepts where wherever it is required right. So, that you will, you will know that how we are going to synthesize all those understanding, but unless you have this understanding synthesis become extremely difficult right. That is why I am spending time on this one of my friend complained you are going on giving a lecture when you are going to synthesize and for me the answer is very simple before you go for any Olympic competition you have to do your training at home perfect right. You have to sweat during training so that you can smile during performance and that is what the approach I believe the youngster must follow and I am trying to contribute towards that ok. We will also now a little bit of uh, revisit the climb rate or climb and glide let me give that title. When we are climbing there are two things that comes to our mind one is what is the climb angle right another is what is the one is climb angle another is rate of climb. Suppose it is climbing at a speed v, then we know v sin gamma is the rate of climb. We will be sharing with you different values recommendations by aviation authorities, maybe FA or ESA or DGCF. Uh, once you are clear to, to this, and before you come for a design, we will go for one lecture on all those specifications, right. That is important because unless you follow those regulatory specifications, you will not get certificate or certificate of airworthiness or certificate of safety, you will not get right. So, we will visit that once these fundamentals are clear. This is another term being used, you will find this climb gradient. Typically, if you see if I write for a climb, it is T minus D minus W sin gamma equal to 0 for a steady climb, and you have sin gamma equal to T minus D by W, which is referred to as climb gradient. Now, you understand what is the meaning of sin gamma, where gamma is the flight path angle, right. Now, if I use this equation, I can write T by W minus D by W equal to G because G is T minus D by W. So, I am not doing anything great. 
and then I write d by w is equal to t by w minus g from here it comes here. So, then I can write d by w is equal to q infinity s c d naught plus q infinity s into C L square by pi aspect ratio E, which I can write as, so d by w is this, which I can write d by w equal to further q C D naught by w by s, of course there will be a w here, I miss that w here d by w, d means drag, half rho v square s c d naught, half rho v square s into k c l square, so divided by w is here. So, that is why d by w I can write now as q c d naught by w by s, w by s into 1 by q infinity pi aspect ratio e. I repeatedly I tell young friends, please derive this expression if somewhere I am committing a mistake right in the forum. Okay. So, d by w I have expressed using w by s. Now, I go back to this equation and substitute d by w expression here and do some rearrangement and find out an expression w by s as t by w minus g plus minus under root t by w minus g square minus 4 c d naught by pi aspect ratio e divided by 2 q infinity pi aspect ratio e. Here, see this expression again, if this gentleman has to have a realistic value of w by s, so that means then this discriminant has to be greater than or equal to 0, otherwise the value will become unreal, imaginary. So, what do you do? What is the condition you get which a designer will try to snatch as a very important information. So, it will tell you that t by w greater than equal to g plus 2 under root c d naught by pi aspect ratio e. Right? What is the message you are getting here? Do not forget you are talking about climb, right? Climb means g is what? G is t minus d by w, right. Okay. So, for a given value of g, whatever climb rate you want, you put that number here, put the aerodynamics here, then you have to ensure that t by w should satisfy this condition. For example, if you want to extrapolate what will be t by w for climb angle say this is nothing but sin gamma. Let us say gamma you want 10 degree, then g value is sin of 10 and let us say that value approximately is 10 by 57 or it is 1 by 6 roughly. So, that is 0.1 around 0.1. 10 by 57.3 means roughly 1 by 6, 1 by 6 is around 0 0.1, 6.16 roughly, what are the value? So, that value you have to put it here, put the aerodynamic derivatives and their values here, C D naught say 0 0.02, aspect ratio is 8 on 8 or 7, E may be 0 0.7, pi you know, so you will get a condition, what is the T by W required to have a climb rate given by the value of G, as simple as that. Okay. If I want to extrapolate the information about gliding 
once you are gliding means there is no thrust. So, in that expression whatever I have written put T by W equal to 0. So, that will give you what sort of W by S required for gliding right okay. from this expression itself. So, for gliding you just put T by W equal to 0 because no thrust during gliding. So, you can use that earlier expression to get what is W by S and for ceiling maximum ceiling you know that ceiling is that altitude at which rate of climb maximum is 0, but we generally work with service ceiling. For service ceiling the rate of climb maximum is 100 feet per minute. So, you convert it into appropriate unit and then put g equal to 0, because at absolute ceiling the rate of climb will be 0. So, put g equal to 0 for absolute ceiling and get the expression by putting T by W at that condition, because it is at that altitude, what is the thrust, what is the weight. So, that you put in that expression along with g equal to 0 for absolute ceiling, because g 0 mean rate of climb is 0, but if you want to go for service ceiling, same expression you can use. Let me write that expression, so that you will be able to follow it. So, I repeat if I want to find out what is the wing loading for gliding, I can use this expression because for gliding T by W is 0, I am not applying any thrust. We can use the expression of W by S here by putting T by W 0 in this expression. Right. Now, if you want to go for ceiling, let us say rate of climb is 100 feet per minute, which I am talking about service ceiling. Then I have to find out the equivalent value of g, g is what? g is ratio of vertical speed by horizontal speed. See this is if you see that this is the V and this is gamma, this is V sin gamma and gamma is tan gamma is vertical velocity by horizontal velocity. Okay. And also you could see sin gamma equal to vertical velocity by total velocity. And what is your G? G is nothing but this. What is VV? VV is rate of climb. So, what do we do? If I am going for a service ceiling which is 100 feet per minute, I convert that 100 feet per minute to vertical velocity that is the rate of climb. So, and I know what speed I am going divide it I get value of sin gamma which is the value of g I put it here and what is the T by w for that local condition I put it here and I get w by s for service ceiling right of whatever magnitude you want correct because 
Remember, service ceiling is that altitude at which rate of climb becomes 100 feet per minute. So that altitude part is taken care by T by W local conditions. Also CD naught because the Reynolds number will be different. So all these things will be covered into this expression. So you have to carefully use it and get the right wing loading values. Also another thing you must uh, understand this CD naught this plays important role and from a specification point of view I thought I will tell you a little more before I end. When you are designing a say, twin engine aircraft, right? it is possible that one engine may fail, but through rudder you will be able to control the yawing moment. But from safety point of view, there is a prescribed rate of climb even with one engine failed. Right? There is a prescribed rate of climb with the landing gear out, because as the landing gear is out, there will be increment in the drag, so that will change the rate of climb, because you know rate of climb is, this is the power required and whatever power available, this is excess power. So as the landing gear is out, your drag increases. What is that made the drag increase? The CD naught value with landing gear out will increase. When you are climbing, if you are putting the flap, then this landing gear, the CD naught with flap, they will increase. I am comparing this increment with respect to clean aircraft. So when you are finding this wing loading and all, we have to very carefully take the value of CD naught, right? And for that, I can tell you, for takeoff flap setting, these are the tentative number, right? CD naught gets increased by 0 0.02, and E generally goes by down by 5 percent. And landing, landing, the flap setting is maximum, right? because you want to also increase drag. So that time you will find, you will not be surprised if CD naught gets increased order of magnitude of 0 0.05 to 0 0.07 and E reduces by 10 percent. So these are 0 0.05 to 0 0.07. These are some number that the designer should know so that in the conceptual design he takes care of this. Maybe it will conservative, it does not matter. Okay? Typically retractable landing gear retractable landing gear is when you are putting the landing gear out. Suppose I have a clean aircraft, CD naught is let us say 0 0.02, and once I am putting the landing gear out, the CD naught may get increased by 0 0.02, which are substantial actually. Right? So, this these are things which we need to uh, keep back of our mind before we try to configure. These lectures are to tell you, give you an idea about what a designer should look for when he is trying to get few basic parameters and how they are sensitive to some system which are unavoidable. You cannot avoid a landing gear for aircraft mostly. But when you will be actually solving a problem for a specific airplane, we will see exactly how much it is increased. Right? Maybe you will be using standard data. If possible, I will use data for Hansa 3 aircraft, whatever data is available. So those things will come. There will be a total case study but we need to prepare ourselves with this understanding, right? Thank you very much.